Hello everyone, in this lesson, we're going to learn how to use data store to save your game data in Roblox. Before you get started, you need to set it up first. So first you need to publish your game to Roblox and then come back in and go to file, game settings, security, enable studio access to API services needs to be turned on. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Once you've done that, press save. And now we're ready to use data store in Roblox. The purpose of using data store is to save your game's data. Without data store, you're going to lose all your game's data. So when you exit the game and you come back in, you're going to lose everything that you had in the previous game. So with data store, as you exit the game, the game can save all those data and when you come back in in player added you can reload all those data back into the players the ideal place for your data store would be in the player added and the player removing events but in this lesson we're going to try and keep it simple so we're just going to create a single script in the server script service without using the player added or player removing event. For further details on player added and player removing event, please refer back to our previous lessons on player added and player removing events. So now let's get started. We're gonna to go to server script service and we're gonna add a script, call it data store, and add the following script to it. On the first line here, I'm declaring my data store service. On the second line, I'm declaring my data store. The name of my data store is points DSS2. So when I want to use my data store, I can refer to this name to use the data store. And here is just a data dictionary for my sample data. I'm going to use a for in pairs loop to load my data store table. So here is my four in pairs loop. And to load the data store table, I'm going to start with my declare data store name followed by colon set async. This function has two parameters. The first parameter is the key and the second parameter is the value. So when you want to retrieve the value, you're going to use the key to retrieve the value. And I have inserted this statement inside a P core. A P core is going to, it's a protected core. So in case there is something wrong with this statement, it's not going to crash my game. So down here, I check if this statement was executed successfully. If it's not, then I'm going to send out a warning message. So this part here is the part that I would put inside my player removing event. Before the player leaves the game, I want to record the data into the data store. On the other hand, this code down here is the code that I would put inside my player added event which is the code that you're going to use to retrieve the data from your data store. So let's take a look. Here I just declare a variable for the name of the player. So I just pick a, a player from up here that I want to retrieve his score, right? So in player added, you're going to get the player, right? And then you, you can use the player as the ID to get the player's score. So to get the player score, you're going to use, again, you're going to use the name of the data store, colon, get async, and you're passing in the key. The key is the name of the player, or you can use the player ID if you want it to be unique. Again, we're wrapping a p-core around this statement. 
so that in case something goes wrong, it's not gonna crash your game. And you're testing if, if it's successful, then you have the data. This would return your data into this variable points. So here I'm just printing out the points returned from above. Now let's play and take a look. And here it is. It says gamer 88 points is 391. Let's verify that. So here gamer 88 points is 391. So that is correct. So all I did was I gave it the name of the player, right? And this, this whole record here, this whole entry here is stored in your data store. So your data store is gonna look up game 88, gamer 88, and it's gonna return 391 into this variable points. And then here we're just printing out the points. Uh, we can try a different one just so that you're convinced. Um, let's try this guy, Legend R. He actually has the highest score. And we're just going to change the name here to Legend R. Oh, I got to stop this first. And then I'm going to play again. And we expect like 18,000 18, something, and here it is. Legend R is 18558. Legend R 18558 to be exact. Now one more thing you need to know is, once your data is stored inside your data store, you no longer need this, right? I mean, for this example, because it's already stored inside the game. So you don't need all of these because you don't need to reload it all the time. If you do this, uh, if you do this again, like the second time, it's just gonna update that that one entry. For for example, like uh, in this case, it's gonna update all these entries, but with the same score. In your game, if the number changes, then you're gonna do it again. But otherwise, you don't need to set a sync again for the same entry for the same score because it's already stored in your game. So let's take a look. We're going to remove all these. So, so all we do is we're going to go to the data store and we're going to retrieve the data from the data store. And just to show you that the data is stored inside your game without you ever loading it again, we're going to press play again and it should still give us the same exact numbers. And there it is. So now we don't need to um, load that, that points again, right? When, when you get back into your game, in your player added, you're just gonna get the points for this player and the game is gonna return the points for you. All right, so that's how you use data store to save your game's data in Roblox.